did give an address and he did reveal that there were 14 new positive <coughs> tests of COVID-19 and 600, 683 tests were con conducted. So we will hear more about what will happen today. We did hear that two health workers, one from the Saka and one from Kabul, were in those 14 positives, as well as six truck drivers. Also, a lawyer assistant from Tanzania was also reported as a positive case. There are many more around that issue, and like you say, many people are digesting the presidential speech, and I've seen the various stakeholders in studio just giving their opinions to the speech and just analyzing how the next few days will go. But for now, the most important thing is what has taken place in the last 24 hours and Dr. Chitalu Chilogin, the Minister of Health and Resignation. Good morning, countrymen and women and members of the press. I woke up to today's uh, press briefing. Yesterday, the Republican President, His Excellency Dr. Edgar Chagodo, addressed the nation, reminding all of us that we were still actively battling the COVID-19 pandemic. The President directed cautious reopening of key areas of the economy and key areas of various uh, activities that we do in our livelihoods, but emphasized the need for adherence to public health regulations, rules, guidelines, and certification. The President has been consistent, and I'd like to reiterate his call for all of us to ensure that we are conscious that the COVID-19 outbreak is still with us, and as we reset to a new normal, and as we cautiously reopen specific areas of our activities, it is important to subject this to the lens of public health rules, guidelines, and regulations. So, therefore, it is important to note that the key areas, the key guidelines remain the same, that we restrict public gatherings and enhance public personal and environmental hygiene and let us ensure that we wear masks in public and he gave the clarity call to all of us to continue being alert and notify suspected cases and as we gradually return to normalcy practice physical distancing i urge all of us to be adherent to the guidelines and to the directives as given by his Excellency President Edgar Chagodongo, and ensure that in all we do, as we cautiously return to normalcy, we respect public health guidelines. Health authorized officers are on hand in every part of the country to support you as you gradually return to normalcy. Remember, the screaming theme is that the President would like to see that delicate balance between preventing a public health crisis and avoiding people being hungry and becoming poverty stricken. So that delicate balance to avert a health catastrophe and allow the economy to run summons all of us to the responsibility. One, yes, to return gradually to normalcy subject to observing public health regulations, guidelines, and certification. This, the President has been very consistent about. Countrymen and women, the President further said that COVID-19 will be with us for some time. And therefore, it was important that we adapt. And in adapting and ensuring that the key, the key areas of our livelihoods are quickly resuscitated. It will be important to ensure that we move in tandem, returning gradually to where we were, but observing public health rules so that the public is not at risk of a public health crisis. This is the consistent message from the president. 
trade and commerce needs to continue while ensuring that the environment in which trade and commerce is happening is devoid of the risk of escalated COVID-19. Therefore, let us hold hands and in solidarity work together and ensure that we follow stringently the guidelines as pronounced by His Excellency President Ajahn in yesterday's address and we are on ground, we are on ground to continue supporting you as you follow the guidance and directives that His Excellency President Trump gave yesterday. Today, as we address, as we update the nation on COVID-19, I will be focusing on two key areas. One, the mass screening and targeted testing in Lakombe that we've been talking about. Two, I will be talking about the rest of the country in terms of uh, the targeted testing and the mass screening that has been taking place in certain communities and in our health facilities as part of facility surveillance. Let me begin by giving only one to Dar es Salaam and they tested positive after they presented with some symptoms while in quarantine in Chingona. The Zambia National Public Health Institute, working with the provincial team, immediately swam into action to do contact tracing, aggressive contact tracing. And beyond that contact tracing, the team also decided to do mass screening and targeted testing of the various stakeholders in Nakombe to assure or to reinforce their decision to do that intervention in Nakombe we did notice a spike in the number of truck drivers that were coming from across the border in Nakombe from the Tanzania side the increase in numbers of truck drivers that were testing positive. So we did therefore intensify the mass screening and targeted testing in Nakonde and today we will report on those results. Before I zero in on Nakonde, I'd like to inform the nation that we have recorded three deaths that are COVID related. Now the three deaths that are COVID related that we have recorded involve an 82 year old patient from Nampundwe who had a cerebral vascular accident or commonly known as a stroke at home and was rushed to the to the Lemonwasa teaching hospital. And on arrival at the University Teaching Hospital there, the patient in the unconscious state was, uh, was examined and resuscitation began. Part of the investigations involved doing a CT scan that was done at the University Teaching Hospital. The patient was subjected to the routine protocol of screening for COVID-19 and this patient did test positive for COVID-19 and this patient succumbed to the complications of the cerebral vascular accident and was also found to be COVID-19 and has been notified not only as a COVID case but also as a COVID-19 related death. Remember that the probable causes in cases of this nature are very clear the CBA itself, massive as it was, was adequate to cause the mortality. But other findings did include also COVID-19. It's also important to note that vulnerability to CBA is also enhanced in patients where you have COVID-19 as studies have revealed. But it's important to note that this patient had a massive bleed 
secondary to hypertension and this patient was elderly, was 82 years old and came into the hospital critically ill with the complications of cerebrovascular accident or commonly known as a stroke. The second patient is a 30 year old female from Ngombe, from Bounty and Osaka and this patient has been in our care for a chronic liver condition called cirrhosis. And this patient already had developed hepatic encephalopathy or mental disorder associated with uh, the condition that is uh, in the liver there, simply put. But this patient had hepatic encephalopathy associated with chronic with a chronic liver condition known as cirrhosis. This patient was brought into the hospital critically ill and as part of the protocols we did swab and we did find that this patient had also COVID and we entered this patient as having died, yes, from the chronic conditions, chronic consequences, the consequences or the chronic complications of the chronic liver condition but also noted the presence of COVID, so it is COVID-related mortality. The third patient is from Ndona, and this third patient did present to our facilities again in a very ill state from, and was being investigated for tuberculosis. This patient was under investigation for tuberculosis and did present to the hospital and as part of the investigations uh, was swapped for COVID-19 and this patient died a few days after admission to Dollar Central Hospital. These are the three deaths that are COVID related that we have recorded in the last 24 hours. Further, I'd like to report that in Osaka, out of the mass screening, and testing and the surveillance that we're doing in our facilities we have recorded nine new cases those nine new cases include the two deaths so we mean that what that means is that Osaka now has seven new active uh, cases that we are dealing with and this is out of the 346 cases tests that we did in the last 24 hours. Getting back to our situation in Nagondi, where we were alerted of a challenge of the cases of those, by the presence of those two cases, and also the increase in the recent past of truck drivers who were testing positive. I must report and I must make this very clear. But when we got those two cases of a woman and the husband who tested positive, the team swung into action immediately and did contact tracing and tested all the possible contacts within Nagondi there, including the lodge and the staff they dealt with at the port of entry. And the results of that investigation were announced and they were negative. But as you know, that the incubation period for COVID-19 is 2 to 14 days and the situation on the ground can change rapidly. It can flare up rap, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a flex of moments. It can flare up. So the two cases that we initially reported attracted an aggressive contact tracing process and that yielded what we reported. But with more truck drivers, like in the last week where we reported 10 truck drivers that were positive, that resulted in a mass screening that involved one, truck drivers, two, immigration staff and agents, three, members of the community, particularly the lodges where we know the truck drivers spend time, and our hospital staff that are part of the Port Health Services. Out of these investigations, we now have analyzed 170 tests. And out of these, 76 have come out positive. 76 tests have come out positive. 
and these are broken down as follows. 26 are truck drivers that have been crossing into the country and 13 are workers and commercial sex workers. Workers from lodges and commercial sex workers, 13. And 31 involve our immigration staff and agents and four are non-contacts of the cases that we had picked earlier. Therefore, the 76 cases that we picked out of Nakonde added to the nine cases that we picked out of Osaka and the Copper Belt bring the new cases we are notifying today to 85. So 85 new cases. The operation in Nakonde continues and today we are analyzing another 650 tests. Now the operation in Nakonde today brings out one key thing. Nakonde is the new epicenter for COVID-19. Number two, Nakonde is an infected area that must be avoided. Number three, in a whole government approach, we will institute stringent border control measures to avoid further importation of COVID-19 and also to ensure that we stem the community spread that is raging in the country. We will therefore be getting back with even more details on the measures which will be informed by a whole government approach. The collaboration between the Ministry of Home Affairs, Transport and Commerce and Industry and the Ministry of Health and indeed any other stakeholders will inform measures that we will be announcing not pretty soon. The screening continues. The cases that you see out there the truck driver's population, if you notice, is 20, is, is a lot. We transmit, we allow truck drivers to come into the country carrying petroleum products, carrying essential goods, which is important for us, especially with our land drift status, to ensure that we allow essential services, essential commodities, fuel and food to get into the country. We will, we will assure that we tighten our border controls using the collaborative actions, anchoring on the collaborative actions of various departments of government. We want to reiterate the call by His Excellency President Edgar Chagolungu that as we cautiously and gradually return to normalcy, we should adhere to public health measures. And that all the actions that are announced are subject to review based on the evolution of the pandemic and based on the responsibility that we see from your end as the community. We want to thank all of you who have been adherent and compliant to the regulations that have been clearly set out in the Public Health Act, the statutory provisions SI 2122, and in the presidential directives that His Excellency President Room has consistently given to the nation. We will shift. We will be meeting all our patients in one facility in Nakonde and in another facility at Chesali General Hospital. We will bring forced staff at the facilities and we are going to ensure that all that are picked out as positive are managed in our isolation facilities. For those who are returning from Nakonde, for those who are returning through the Nakonde border, you will be mandatorily quarantined and won't be allowed to proceed.
for a minimum of 14 days and will be subjected to the testing, to the screening and the testing. So there is reinforced quarantine interventions in the Kongo. We will continue advising you, we will continue giving you the advisory not to travel to infected areas and we will continue advising you to postpone unnecessary travel. Advisories on travel will continue to be issued and we also want to guide you should you be found to be coming from a COVID high risk jurisdiction through the Nakonde border, you will be quarantined mandatorily for 14 days at your own cost. And secondly, we also want to emphasize that for those of you who will be getting into a COVID high risk jurisdiction, you will not only be subjected to screening, but on your return, you will be quarantined mandatorily for 14 days. We'll continue identifying designated truck parks for trucks that are carrying essential commodities and ensure that there is escorted movement of such trucks whether to certain destinations in Zambia or in transit to other parts of the country assuming that these trucks are carrying essential goods such as petroleum, mining requisites, food or agricultural inputs. We will continue to facilitate trade and commerce while ensuring that we limit importation of COVID-19. The number that you receive today is a reflection of the sensitivity of the surveillance activities that the Mount Sectoral team has embarked on. It is also going to inform further action. Nakonde remains to be or has emerged to be the epicenter of the COVID-19 in Zambia and is an infected area. Cross-border collaboration with our counterparts in Nakonde in Tanzania we continue, in Congo we continue to ensure that we limit the spread of COVID-19 in our jurisdiction and in other jurisdictions. We will continue engaging with the community through various platforms and ensure that we sensitize you with information that will, that will protect you from COVID-19. Remember, the President emphasized that the battle against COVID-19 continues and there are models that project that we have it yet picked and there are models that show that the worst is yet to come and it's important that we adhere to the public health rules even as we gradually return to normalcy and that this gradual return shall be passed through the public health lens, shall be passed through the analysis of data or the pandemic as it evolves. Therefore, you'll be regularly updated as guided by His Excellency President Lungu to ensure that we are able to balance, establish a delicate balance between avoiding the public health crisis and ensuring that the rules of the economy do not grind to a halt. We continue appreciating the community for alerting us and we have received 3,647 alerts from the rather 1,821 alerts from the community and these have been cleared as nine cases. We also want to thank those who have adhered to the 14-day quarantine period and today 3,647 cases have been discharged from the 14-day quarantine period. A peep into the global picture, we have crossed 4 million and we report 4,014,500 cases of COVID-19 cumulatively with deaths now hitting 276,253. We, however, report on a positive note 
1,387,259 recoveries in 212 countries and two conveyances. Back home in Africa, we have recorded 59,124 cases with 2,164 deaths. 19,839 recoveries have been recorded. Zambia being the anchor of the Africa Center for Disease Control and through our Foreign Affairs Ministry will continue engaging in cross-border interactions to ensure that we work together collaboratively with our neighboring countries one, to ensure that movement of essential goods is not inhibited, but at the same time limit the possibility of importing COVID-19. For us back home, let us continue to ensure that the measures that have been announced are strictly adhered to. When we look at Nakone isolation facilities that have been established, and that will continue to be established will either be in Nakonde or Chisani. Our two treatment facilities will be in Nakonde and Chisani. We have dispatched staff, medical supplies, and other consumables to support the effective management of cases in Muchinga. Surveillance too has been enhanced while port health services have also been enhanced. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when you analyze the number of cases that were tested together cumulatively in the last 24 hours, what you will see is that black analyzed area, the total. When you look at the DRC testing center, at the UTH testing center is a total of 85 cases. It is also important to note that we have discharged further one more case and this brings the total number of recoveries in the country to 112. Let us mask up, let us avoid public health gatherings that are not adherent to Public Health Act and let us continue practicing personal hygiene and let us ensure that we do not engage in unnecessary travel, especially to COVID high risk countries. I thank you for listening today and that's the update for the day. Good afternoon, Minister. My name is Brian Mallet from CNBC. I want to find out, yesterday we did see the President, um, should I say, allowing things to go back to normal under the new normal of observing virus health guidelines. And among them is opening of restaurants and casinos and examination classes uh, for schools uh, slated for the 1st of June. I want to find out if these new cases in Nakonde, taking into consideration that Nakonde has a number of boarding schools, 
Are we seeing the ministry maybe recommending to the government for some of these measures to be maybe suspended or enhanced, especially for Nakwani? Thank you. Good afternoon, Honorable Minister Bata Smokin from Kensington TV. Um, I would like to find out if we have Zambians living abroad who have been infected with COVID-19 or if we have any deaths. Good afternoon, Minister. My name is Martana Mwenda from Spin TV. I would like to find out, seeing that the President lifts some restrictions in the country, we have some rights from staff also have bars. So what would the ministry do to ensure that these bars don't continue to Well, thank you uh, very much. Uh, the president was categorical that specific areas of the economy will be reopened cautiously and subject to adherence to the Public Health Act, subject to the Public Health Act and statutory instrument 21 and 22. And so all the specific areas that were itemized are not just reopened without a caveat. It is with a caveat. It is with a proviso that you must ensure you adhere to the Public Health Act. That's exactly what the President said. He is cautiously reopening specific areas and admonished all of us and those involved to ensure that as they do so, they adhere to the provisions, the guidelines, and be certified to public health authorities. And I said that our authorized officers are on ground to support you to execute a guided who was directed by His Excellency President Edgar Chakonungu. The statement I gave on schools was very clear <clears throat> and it's important that we quote His Excellency the President correctly. The President did announce a date for the reopening of schools, for the reopening of examination classes, and made it very clear that universities, colleges, and indeed anybody else involved in education needs to collaboratively engage to determine when they would reopen. And for both situations, he made it very clear. Subject one to the to his watchful eye of the pandemic, and two, to the Public Health Act and the statutory provisions therein. So, it needs no further explanation that consistently the President has said we shall gradually return to normalcy in the face of COVID-19, but we will strike that balance between ensuring we do so and abating the public health crisis that he was carefully watching the pandemic and that data that is adduced on a daily basis, information produced on a daily basis, the evolution of the pandemic would inform further strategic policy direction. And I think that he was very categorical about. And therefore, my simple response to that is that the president is consistent and made it very clear that subject to public health rules, guidelines, certifications, there is a cautious easing of certain specific areas of our livelihoods. And that he was carefully watching the pandemic and would use that to strategically provide guidance. It is the reason he is regularly addressing the nation on the subject. Well, the data we have so far is that we have lost four Zambians that living abroad due to COVID-19 in America and in England. And 
this will be subject to confirmation. I mean, this will be subject to updating should there be any more information that we get through our Minister of Foreign Affairs. But to date, that is the information that we have and we will update the nation should there be more information that would have come in through our Foreign Affairs Ministry. There are many Zambians out there who did suffer from COVID-19 and who have recovered from COVID-19. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. <coughs> we will give uh, um, another opportunity for questions if we still have any outstanding questions. That was a mouthful. I'll go and uh, I'll go ahead and respond and wait for the other questions. Uh, first of all, the capacity in Muchinga is adequate to manage the cases we've reported so far. Like I alluded to earlier on in my updates, we were battle ready and did isolate or did pick out Chesali General Hospital with a capacity of 300 as a quarantine facility or isolation facility for treating cases of COVID-19. We already have appropriate transport from Nakonde to Chisali to move patients. Secondly, within Nakonde itself, we have a facility that is 60 bed, that is looking at management that is going to assist us in management of cases further. We are in engagement with our stakeholders, our colleagues in the whole government approach to transform some of the infrastructure there into isolation facilities or quarantine facilities for those who are returning home to augment to what is existing there. If you are speaking about passenger transport, I did make a statement that we will be reviewing our border our border uh, restrictive measures and we want to emphasize that in a whole government approach we will come up with measures that we will announce very well shortly on uh, the stringent border control measures that will help us limit uh, the possible spread um, you know of, of, of COVID-19 our capacity to test is increasing on a daily basis. Remember that we have said before, the gene expert machine, which traditionally has been used for diagnosis of tuberculosis, is now being reconfigured using you know, specific cartridges to ensure that we can do testing for COVID-19. And Mochinga is one province with adequate gene expert machinery and so our capacity, laboratory testing capacity will be enhanced uh, in Muchinga. Further, this is not only applicable to Muchinga, it is applicable to all the border points in the country. Remember, we've been saying that we'll do prevalence studies and therefore even in places where we don't have pointers, there shall be sampling of specific areas as part of the prevalence study to ensure that we understand fully the extent of the challenge in the country and we also use it as an opportunity to confirm that the questions we hear in terms of data resonates with what we believe that there's no COVID in those areas. So that is going to be a you know, done. But we will maintain our advisories. Why would you travel to an infected area? Who will quarantine you if you're coming back from an infected area at your own cost. And failure to adhere to quarantine rules 
who will attract severe punishment, including prosecution and jail sentences. And will not jail you to, in a place where you're going to transmit COVID-19. We'll find some way to do that. <laughs> Yes, we did announce the other day that uh, we were expecting a total of 600 Zambians who were returning home from India and South Africa. These are either returning students, or people who were undergoing therapy in those specific jurisdictions, or people who were coming back from their routine visits. And we have adequately prepared for them in terms of quarantine and in terms of testing. And so far, we have received a number. The other day, we were reporting 31 that had come in from India, and we thought on day one, we'd actually be dealing with about 60. So we'll continue updating the nation on the return of uh, citizens from foreign jurisdictions, but they will be subjected to quarantine groups, mandatory quarantine. And this is to ensure that we limit the spread or the importation of COVID-19. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, I'd like to see no further. Is that, is that the hand? Okay, we could have that as our last question. Back. You wanted me to resign. You know, like you're back to ask me <laughs> question. No, I come in peace. Okay. I come in peace, Honorable Minister. So, uh, mine is just a follow up on what you mentioned on uh, enhancing robust COVID 19 curriculum activities in border towns. I just wanted to find out does that include mass testing as well, looking at the numbers that my family is reflecting at the moment? And secondly, it's a follow-up on the Eastern Province case where the woman was tested to travel for the funeral and before, you know, as she was coming back, she was communicated to that she is COVID-19 positive. I'd like to find out, how did she travel after being tested? Are you privy to the details of uh, that particular case? Thank you. Any other questions, members of the press, or you forever hold your peace? <laughs> Any other questions? None. Thank you very much. The woman that traveled to Eastern Province was tested, and uh, the result was negative. She was tested and she traveled, so the result was negative. So we don't have any new case in uh, Eastern Province. And this is the same message that Eastern Province administration is telling the whole world. Should there be any information from any province who lies and ensure that we communicate it appropriately? Our capacity to test in our various provinces has improved with the international imaging expert machines. Um, as part of the COVID-19 armory, and therefore Machinga, Eastern Province, have all enhanced laboratory testing the capacity. My answer to the uh, question on, um, from our lady from ABN, is it on school children in Machinga? School children that are in other towns. 
School children that are in the other parts of the country. Yes, other than Other than Lakonde. Yes. Well, first of all, I want to emphasize that the surveillance activities that are taking place in Lakonde are the same surveillance activities that are taking place in other border areas. So when we pick up cases, they give us a lead. We also are alert to what's happening across borders, and that gives us also leads. So as we speak today, I believe you hear that certain borders are not reporting cases. It's not because there's no testing taking place, no. There is active surveillance, active screening. The index of suspicion is high. Active case finding is going on, and it's only because we're reporting them as either not meeting the criteria or case definition for COVID-19 case or they're testing negative. And some of the tests that you hear are being produced from the mass screening using our UGH virology laboratory or TDRC laboratory are actually tests that are coming from certain borders as part of the routine surveillance, certain border areas as part of the routine surveillance. Like I said, the president was categorical. A first approach, a gradual return to normalcy, the president was categorical. All that he eased in any specific area shall be subjected to public health rules, guidelines, regulation, and certification. Further, he did betray his watchful eye on the pandemic, analyzing the data as it evolves, engaging with his technical machinery, and assuring that in every decision he makes, it will be informed by the current data. So in analysis, continuous analysis of information related to COVID-19, the president shall be guiding the nation on strategic policy direction and what he gave yesterday our greater rate was to put on the wall loudly that delicate balance between ensuring or minimizing the disruptive effect of COVID-19 on the economy and also with that we don't have a huge catastrophe in the health sector that affects the people. So uh, that is the consistent message from His Excellency President Kuhu. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, uh, you see, a clarification, please uh, quickly just do that before we proceed to the next part of the program. Okay. Honorable uh, Minister, just a clarification. Just a clarification, Honorable Minister, on the same Eastern Province case. There were about 107 uh, samples subject to correction or verification from the office that were sent to the site from Eastern Province. Were all those tested and did they all come out negative? That's what I wanted clarification on. Well, maybe you're referring to a woman who traveled to Eastern Province, you know, for a funeral and they was tested when uh, you know the the uh, before they traveled, and uh, they you know they were they were reaching Chongwe, you know they were picked out uh, the results had already come out, and uh, the result was positive and they were quarantined in the, in Chongwe, and that was not an Eastern Province case, uh, in case that's where the confusion is is coming from. This was a Lusaka based fellow person who intended to travel that funeral and. Uh, they got the results in Chongwe and there was quarantine in Chongwe. So it's not an Eastern Province case. Uh, and that's been reported as part of the statistics. So, well, here we are. 85 new cases in the country. One discharge, bringing our total discharges to 112. With the 85 new cases, therefore, we are at 252 cumulatively cases in the country, we have seven COVID-related deaths and all the patients that are with us remain stable. 
the deaths that we are reporting, we should remember that yes, those with comorbidities who succumb earlier or easier to COVID-19. So, COVID-19, you carry a higher risk with advanced age, with comorbidities such as hypertension, cardiovascular conditions, cardiovascular conditions, TB, chronic immunological problems, or in fact, deficits in our community, in the face is now immunity, and many other chronic uh, disorders. Comorbidities generally will predispose you to succumbing to COVID-19. And therefore, stay home, wash your hands, make sure that the environmental hygiene is enhanced, and even as you gradually return to normalcy in specific areas as announced by His Excellency President Kachaburumu, respect what has been dictated in the Public Health Act and the Statute of Provisions 21 and 22, and we are on ground to work with you. Surveillance countrywide will continue, and strict border control measures will be announced uh, and other measures for the Kondawa, the, the, the screening and um, uh, testing takes place. I've said repeatedly we are in the SAGE phase and we expect to see more numbers with our enhanced testing capacity. His Excellency President Rumu summed it up well by saying we will still have COVID in our country and as we live with COVID, let us ensure that delicate balance between allowing our economy to run and also avoiding a public health crisis. So we thank you very much for listening. Honorable Minister, to the Cabinet Secretaries, we continue to receive a lot of goodwill from various partners across the country who have given a voice to this fight against COVID-19. This morning, I'm privileged to announce that the Pharmaceutical Society of Zambia wishes to make a donation, and I'm honored to call upon Mr. Marlon Banda, the Indian President and Delegation Leader, to come and give some remarks and uh, present his donation. The Pharmaceutical Society of Zambia. <laughs> Yes, I'm <laughs> We are the interim president. What has happened to the substantive president? We are turning a new leader. Well, uh, when, he, when he was shooting government. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I hope that you will accept that. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I am here privileged by pharmacists and pharmacy personnel in the Pharmaceutical Society, as well as the inter-leadership inter of the Pharmaceutical Society of Zambia to present a donation to the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. As you know, the Pharmaceutical Society is a collection of pharmacy personnel motivated to take our place alongside other health professionals to contribute to the quality healthcare delivery that the Ministry of Health leads. The in-kind donation that we are making, Honorable Minister, is valued uh, to a total of 146,000 kwacha. <laughs> and it's composed of various items that are useful for the prevention of uh, transmission of COVID-19. Uh, we will be able to uh, view those items, Honorable Minister, uh, when we walk out of here but it is hand sanitizers, uh, face masks of various descriptions, surgical and examination gloves, um, washing uh, detergent and sterilizers. Uh, we are also donating, Honorable Minister, a, a unit for air conditioning that we are designated to be installed at the pharmacy that is serving the COVID center at Levi Monawasa. I don't want to make a long speech, Honorable Minister, but we make this donation with two simple messages. The first is that the Pharmaceutical Society of Zambia stands with other health professionals at the heart of the front line of the fight against COVID-19 in this country. The second, Honorable Minister, is that the Pharmaceutical Society of Zambia stands 
with you in the fight for the health of the people of Zambia in this current fight of COVID-19, as well as in your pursuit of the Ministry of Health Legacy Clause for Health. The pharmaceutical society in Zambia is an embodiment of a highly sophisticated scientists in the medical profession, key stakeholders in the provision of health services for people in this country, health services across the whole continent, you know, care. They are involved in promoting medicine, preventive medicine, curative medicine, rehabilitative and palliative medicine, and they are a consistent feature on all those pillars. They are principal stakeholders for government in the provision or improvement of health services. As we talk about case management, they are the ones who even substitute drugs uh, in alignment with the science and ensure that there is adequate treatment of our patients. They work with everyone and lead in ensuring that there is rational use of drugs. And they are active proponents of research in adducing evidence for improved therapeutics. And we would like to appreciate you for the partnership. Solidarity, unit of purpose is key, and this is a time when we all hold hands and ensure that we wage that common war against COVID-19. So we place on record our appreciation for your kind words and also for the solidarity with the government and the Zambian people. And this is as it should be. And congratulations for sorting out the road at the head of the pharmaceutical service. <laughs> <laughs> the situation in Zambia today shows that there is local transmission that started happening, but also shows that there is still importation of cases. This is the reason why. All the provincial health directors, working with the provincial ministers, are under directed to ensure they follow precisely what His Excellency President Mungu said yesterday as he addressed provincial ministers in his address. Strengthen leadership and oversight in all your districts, including border towns, to strengthen surveillance and limit importation of new cases. Strengthen surveillance in your communities so that you pick up new cases and isolate them and make sure they are managed. And ensure that we work together in a whole government approach to first of all address the public health emergency but also minimize the disruptive effects on all the other areas of our economies and livelihoods. That's why it is important to emphasize the broad aspiration that President Lungu has declared that he would want to ensure that Zambians do not suffer, they don't get hungry, we don't entrench poverty, we don't run the economy to, the, to, to, to its knees, but ensure we strike that important balance with avoiding a catastrophe in the health of our people because the catastrophe in the health of our people will actually crown that economy that we're trying to protect. That's why it is important that we summon the best of our conduct as citizens at personal level to ensure we adhere to the directives that we're given out. We need to act, act and act now to ensure we avoid this. Let's continue paying tribute and supporting our health workers at the front line and their multi sectoral partners as they battle COVID-19 at the battlefront. And your conduct will support the quick end to COVID-19 and the preservation of those frontliners, frontliners that uh, we are working together. 
that we're working on uh, COVID-19. So let us assure all stakeholders do not relax or become complacent as we cautiously reopen selected areas of our economy. The SAGE is on and that's exactly what President Lungu means by saying we're still living with COVID but we need to reset to a new normal and ensure that important balance. So our donors that have been working with us, the business world, our professional bodies, we thank you most sincerely for the unity of purpose and solidarity, key components of uh, the fight against COVID-19. And my very last comment is in reference again to one important message in President Lungu's address to the nation. Resilience in our health systems. Mothers still die from preventable maternal deaths, maternal conditions. Children still succumb to vaccine preventable illnesses, to bad nutrition. Adults who are overfed, adults who overindulge and are physically inactive and smoke their lives away are still our concern. It is important to ensure that in ensuring the resilience in our health systems and services, we do not neglect our focus on HIV, malaria, TB, child health, maternal health, non-communicable diseases and other communicable diseases because COVID-19, yes, is an affront to Zambia but speaks to one pillar of our health systems, public health security. Yes, with the disruptive effects on everything else, but let us remain focused on the agenda that government and the President Lungu has. Health for all and legacy goals to defeat HIV, AIDS, malaria, maternal deaths, child deaths, communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases. So let us remain focused. Thank you very much and have a great day.